I think we're probably live. It always starts in a little bit before we realize it has. So I'm Ben Baker, CB Giddy, and I got Glenn Watt here today also. And what we're going to be talking about today is using capacitors with disc piezo pickups to help improve the sound, cut down on feedback, all sorts of good stuff. We've talked about this in different forum posts a number of times, advised people that this is a good way to uh, improve the sound, but today we're going to show it to you. Um, to start with, I want to say we're going to be using one of our pre-wired piezo jack harnesses. We produce these here at CB Giddy, wire them up for you so it's easy to get them in your cigar box guitar and plug it into an amplifier. <clears throat> so we've got a little lamp here and a couple of our pre-wired harnesses just so we can demonstrate the effect that using a capacitor, which is this little guy right here, what effect that'll have on the sound of the cigar box guitar. Now again, this is Cigar Box Nation TV. We do these broadcasts every day at noon. Sometimes we do them here at the Giddy Shop. Other days Shane Spiel does them. So we hope you enjoy this. Um, a couple of announcements. I'm heading down to Nashville tomorrow for the Summer NAM show, and I'm going to be doing some broadcasts from there, live to the Cigar Box Nation Facebook page here. Uh, so that's something to look, watch out for. Hopefully on Thursday at noon, I'll be doing kind of a live walkthrough of the NAM show down there in Nashville. If you don't know what NAM is, it's the biggest uh, trade show each year for the music industry, for the musical instruments, anything to do with making music, uh, you can find at NAM. Uh, the summer NAM show in Nashville is a little smaller and more intimate than the winter NAM show out in Anaheim, but it's a really good time in a great city. So, enough talking. This is our testing cigar box guitar. Did you build this one, Glenn? That is your man, Dan. Dan Caldwell built this many moons ago. Pretty much the epitome of a stick through a box in three strings. <laughs> and we use this for testing different pickups, doing different things here in the Giddy Shop. And it's kind of upside down right now, which makes it hard for me to play it. playing it like a lap steel when it's laying down like this. Uh, we have this one tuned, I think it's G, B, E, D. G, B, D, it's a full G major chord, which gives it a little bit different sound than the G, D, G, open G, that is a power chord that gets used a lot. So I'm gonna be showing you what this sounds like. So to start with, instead of opening up the box and gluing the piezo inside, or piezo inside, um, there's no consensus on how to pronounce that word, by the way. I switch it around pretty That's often. Yep. Piezo, 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 whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to be kind of slipping this under the bridge that rests here on the top of this cigar box, because that'll give us enough vibration from the strings that when it's through the amp, we'll be able to hear it. So I'm just going to kind of try to lift this up a little bit. Once, now that I've got it tuned up all the way, it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, hold that down for me there. I think I might have to loosen up that. Don't want to break. I do not want to break my G-string. That does not make. That does not make for good TV. I'll be right back. <clears throat> it's all about leverage. You got it. So get under there a little bit further. There we go. So. That lost my good tuning there. Close enough. All right, so we've got the piezo stuck underneath the bridge, just kind of tucked in there for a, a quick and simple sort of ad hoc pickup. So you can see we're already getting some feedback, but that's all right because we're going to be showing you one of the good things that a capacitor does is help reduce the feedback that disc piezos are kind of, I won't say famous, kind of infamous for. So let me get this turned down. Now this is not the ideal mounting method for a disc piezo. This is kind of exaggerating some of their worst qualities. Uh, their tendency 
tendency to kind of overdrive and go a little distorted, uh, their tendency to feed back and have that kind of very trebly, uh, Shane Spiel calls it the quack. Uh, I believe that's John Nickel has done a lot of work with piezos as well. He calls it that quackiness of the piezo that, that through a PA system really doesn't sound all that good. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I've got a couple of test leads here just so I can demonstrate what adding a simple capacitor will do for the sound of this thing. Now this is a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. 0.01 microfarad or you might see it as a little UF symbol. It's one of, there's only a few capacitors that tend to be used for guitar tone circuits. 0.01, 0.022, 0 0.033, 0 0.047, and 0.068. Um, for piezos, only really the first two of those are effective, and I'll be demonstrating that here shortly. And then Glenn will jump in when you think it's a good time to yeah. talk about this harness. Okay. Because I tend to ramble on and just keep talking if good. you don't stop. This is good. Um, all right, so I've got my, I've got my capacitor. I'm just going to clip on to the positive and negative sides of the output jack. Try to keep it level. <laughs> What's that? So try to keep it level. I'm okay, to... so you're doing a close-up. Yep. So I'm just clipping on. We've got the two wires coming from the piezo here. The black is ground, the white is positive. So I've clipped my green lead onto the white for positive. And honestly, with this sort of harness, it doesn't really matter too much, which is ground. Uh, so, all right, I'm going to turn this up until it starts to feed back, okay? I'm gonna plug it in first, because that helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because I want feedback. I'm gonna get one of these leads clipped on here. All right, there's our feedback. Now I'm gonna bring this capacitor into play. Did you hear what happened? So just like that, adding the capacitor into the circuit, right from the hot to the ground of the output jack made the amp stop feeding back. Now I don't know if it's this close. See, I can still get it to feed back, but I gotta take the volume up a lot higher than it could have gone before. So now, what does it do for the sound? Well, just getting rid of feedback is a pretty good thing unto itself. So there's what it sounds like. Hopefully that's coming through pretty good. It's kind of distorted, overdriven, very treble heavy. Now if I bring the capacitor back in, it quiets down a little. But it, suddenly you've got a, a gentler, a kind of richer sound. Because what this capacitor is doing is trimming off some of the high end, some of the treble side of the signal that the disc piezo is putting out and disc piezos are treble heavy pickups to begin with mm. so by cutting out just a little bit of that you get a, a little bit more mellow sound i take it back out put it back in now a good way to demonstrate this even better which glenn's going to take over and show you is with this here uh, yes this is our pre-wired passive piezo tone harness. It's got a volume control and a tone control, which uses that exact same capacitor <clears throat> that I was just doing there. So let's see if we can get this, turn that down for a minute. I'll pry the strings back up, try to get that one out. Okay. There we go. Get that lifted up pretty good there. Go. All right. Yes, sir. Nearly in tune, even. <clears throat> so, Glenn, you, you, uh, okay. Glenn does a lot of uh, wiring and work out here in the electronics department. Mm -hmm. um, and we do quite a few of these. Passive piezo tone control. So. Yes. Well, the idea, what Ben's already suggested, or what he's already been saying, is that you already know that disc piezos tend to have a very high end or really scratchy, trebly uh, sound of them. They pick up every sort of bump and scratch that you have on the box, as you can see here. Now that, which is great in terms of having a very inexpensive, easy to use, super efficient pickup to make your cigar box guitar an electric cigar box guitar. In this case, however, what you have, what Ben was demonstrating earlier, was that feedback. 
and I think what you know part of the, the function here that we have is that he's going to be de demonstrating how putting a capacitor directly on the jack, I think some would call it a load capacitor, is that correct? I believe so. Okay, a load capacitor, and he was using these hookup wires to, to, to demonstrate it without actually having soldered one on yet, but this load capacitor will cut off that high end, will take out some of that feedback. What we do have here, however, is something to demonstrate that with, so you can see with a bit more ease. Anybody who's familiar with like an electric guitar or something that you've had maybe in your workshop or at home as a kid is a volume control and a tone control. Now the tone control is another pot, another potentiometer, and it has one of these capacitors that will be soldering directly onto, excuse me, that will be soldering directly onto a jack to show you what a load capacitor is, which will look something similar to that without my grubby thumbs in the way. And in, we instead have a, a tone control, which is one of these potentiometers with the volume control, and you can see where the capacitor is hooked up onto the tone control. Now, this will give you that. Sorry for moving around so quickly there, Nick. That's with the volume all the way up. And that's with the tone all the way up. So this is with the tone cutting out that high end, using, bringing the capacitor into the circuit. see how that capacitor has taken out that high end and eliminated that feedback. Now Ben, if you'll actually what you come got? back in there with what you got for <clears throat> a little whiteboard or something maybe. Well yeah, um, before we, we're going to show you how to solder one of these capacitors onto the jack over at the soldering station. Glenn's going to be walking us through that so you can see how easy it is. Uh, but before we do that, a little bit of exciting theory on the whiteboard here. <laughs> so, so, yes, the favorite part of any presentation. When you look at a capacitor, how do you know which one it is? How do you know the value of it? Say you, you bought a few, they get mixed up. You look at them, there's some tiny little numbers on there. What the heck do they mean? We've got two capacitors out here today. We've got a 0 .01, 0 .01, Zero 0.01 microfarad. The number that is on the front of this, and I know the camera wouldn't zoom in on it, that's why I'm writing. So here's the capacitor, here's the wire sticking out. It's going to have a 103 on there. And there is a way that you fi can figure this out, but basically 0 0.01 microfarad will have a 103. And really what this means is that if the decimal place was right there, you would move it over three times and end up with 0.01. But don't worry about that. 0.01 is 103. 0.022 UF microfarad uh, would be, boy, this is high tech stuff here, would have a 223. So these are the two, actually we didn't demonstrate what the 0.022 does yet, I'll do that real quick. But that, those are the numbers, so you got 103, I don't know, my marker's dying here. 103, 223, another one used a lot on electric guitars with magnetic pickups is a 0.033, and that would be 333. And then there's a 0.047 and a 0.068 that tend to get used on heavy duty electrics and up into bases. Um, that would be 473 and 683. But that's basically how you read that. These first two numbers, put a zero and a dot in front of it and you get the capacitor value. So just real quick, before we let Glenn get busy soldering, I wanna pop this disc piezo back underneath the bridge here. See if I'm handy enough to do it myself. Oh, sure. All right. So you heard it with a point, 0.01, which was the first one we did. With disc piezos, what's it? I'm good. With disc piezos, if you go up into the, the ones that are generally used on electric guitars with magnetic pickups, they can cut out too much of the symbol or the signal. Where did my 0.022 go? Here it is. So let's get this plug back in. And we 
you've got all of the settings on the amp pretty much right in the middle. The treble, middle, bass are all right in the middle. So now if I clip on this 0.022 microfarad capacitor, this is live TV, folks. <laughs> Let me plug the amp into the right jack here. I had it into the Rod Piso jack. So it's feeding back. I bring in the 0.022 capacitor. It stops the feedback. Now this is cutting out even more of the treble signal than the 0.01 did. So you're really starting to lose a lot of your high end. tune now but if we take that back off bring that down a little bit we're back to that like really growly scratchy we pop that on it takes the volume down a bit it takes a lot of your high end so you're left in my opinion that is too high a value of capacitor for this disc piezo because it almost makes the, the sound muddy. Oh, my, you know, it just kind of muddifies it. Now there are types of music, there are songs where that may be what you want, but uh, on these pre-wired harnesses that Glenn showed, we use a 0.01 microfarad capacitor because it gives you just enough, I believe, uh, without being too much. So now we're going to get over to the soldering station. Nick's going to move the Move the camera and everything over, so a little bit of a little bit of camera jitters here while we get adjusted. I'll help with the cords and the cables. Hey. <laughs> or I'll just stand here. Away. <laughs> so what you see here is uh, exactly what Ben had it earlier, which was a quarter inch jack to a disc piezo, a very simple basic harness that is going to have that very scratchy or trebly sound. Now what I'm doing here is killing a little time while I wait for the, uh, the soldering station to heat up, but I'm going to show you how easy it can be. We're going to try to get right in there. There you go. go. Heat it up, that's good. Show you how easy it can be to solder in a capacitor directly onto the jack if you want to bypass having a volume control and a tone control. Just to uh, solder a capacitor directly onto the jack again to take out some of that high end and eliminate some of that feedback now as you can see the the, the harness has already been soldered together so what I'm using the uh, the uh, soldering iron to do is to heat up or to flow some of the solder that's already on there and that's going to open up the possibility for me to add in oh no a little bit of this capacitor. Now do I have that twisted in such a way that it can be seen? Yeah, on it's it's pretty visible. So if you saw what happened there in trying to put the uh, trying to put that capacitor on uh, and then I'm gonna try to help Glenn yeah. hold that without getting too close in the way. Yeah, we're just trying to stay out of the way of the camera so that you have a you can see what's up. Now we we've got more helping hands uh, <laughs> tools that we should be but using here. But none are quite as nice as live helping hands. <laughs> it's live, yes, All I right. am the helping hand tool here today. Now, again, I'm going to try to get out of the and way a, here. A faulty one at best. <laughs> here we go. All right, good stuff. So we're going to heat up that solder, let it flow, and then and what it just kind of speed this up a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit more to the mix. Boom! Look out! All right, now, we got the capacitor in there. I'm going to hold it steady just for a moment while that solder cools enough to, to hold. Alakazam, not bad, right? So what we have is a capacitor done right across. It doesn't matter which way the capacitor goes. No, there's no polarity on a capacitor. And so what we have is the capacitor goes from the positive to the negative jack. It's just basically hooking the two of them together. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of these loose ends. And if you want, shall we uh, go give it a whoa? Go give it a test drive, Ben. Absolutely. All right then. Good stuff. All right, we're going to move the camera back over. We lost a clamp there, so who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Explosions! We're strictly unrehearsed here at Cigar Box Nation TV. And an uncomfortable close-up of Giddy's face. Can we get closer? Can we? Can we? Yes, we can. Okay. We don't need that. No 
nobody wants that. All right. That under there. Squeeze it under a little bit more. Try to get it a little closer right. to in tune. All right, so we've got our capacitor on there. We even put the correct one on. That's always a bonus. So I'm going to plug it in, get my amp back on. So there it is. I can bring the master volume almost up to max, whereas before, if I got above five, it was feeding back. So it's basically, like Glenn was showing us with this, it's basically the same as having a tone pot and just having it all the way down so that as much treble as possible is being trimmed off. It's like an always on tone pot. But my opinion is that for a disc piezo and a 0.01 microfarad capacitor, that's a good thing. Always, it, it's just, it's toned down, it's less quacky. <laughs> to play when it's laying down on the table. So I think, uh, I think that's all we've got to show you today. Uh, I'd like to thank Glenn for jumping in and helping demonstrate this and do the soldering and hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned a little something here on Cigar Box Nation TV. We do these broadcasts every day at noon. Uh, we do them here. Shane does them from down in York, Pennsylvania and we're having a lot of fun with it. Uh, hope you are too and keep in mind I'm going to be doing a few live broadcasts from the NAM show down in Nashville Tennessee uh, I'll be down there tomorrow evening through Sunday morning so keep an eye out for that and uh, happy building <laughs>